All right, everybody, welcome back. I'm here in Grail Classic. Gonna show you guys my guild house today. I have built uh, quite an extensive structure. I had some inspiration, about 10 seconds of inspiration, about a week of perspiration on this one. Um, the amount of time and effort has been absolutely huge and I consciously decided not to um, upload videos of the process. Uh, the idea being that it was just entirely too personal and too much you know, uh, effort was going to be put into building it. There's a lot of guide material, um, so in this front first yard here I've got um, bounty guides and some other basic game guide stuff going on. Um, if anybody wants uh, an invite, you do let me know and you guys can explore it a little bit. Um, what I really wanted to show though is the interiors. So here um, it's my loot set. So I've got all of the, the different loot items all sorted out. You can see up top here there's um, all the items for Elster. Oh yeah, and the firework that lights up the room. So you can see at the top there's all the items for Elster, uh, and then all the other items are listed along the sides uh, for various different NPCs that you can sell loot to. And I've created a kind of pirate-themed bar in the middle here. Uh, we've got the, the Loch Ness monster in the fountain there, as well as some food items and the four ninja turtles. Very rare loot items. Okay. So I'm going to move to the main guild house, which is what I really wanted to showcase here. Um, the idea being that I know that I've shown some structural building stuff, I've shown some tricks and tips and all that kind of thing in the past here, but there is something I really wanted to show and admit that had happened, and that is that I've broken my rules. So normally... Um, I wouldn't allow for uh, layer three items. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't use layer three unless I was specifically going about uh, trying to create some kind of an effect. And I guess technically, um, in this particular situation, um, I mean it is it is creating an effect, but it's something where I'm not creating an effect specifically with lighting. Um, and what I wound up doing is is for testing. Okay, so there has been some improvement here. Um, what I wound up doing is setting up a uh, banister that was on layer 3. So when I walk up here, you can see the banisters on each side here um, are blocking my text. These are layer 3. So the reason that I did this is really the focus of this video. Um, I want to be able to identify why we have layer three. Um, basically, if I get down to the very the bottom level of this, I have bricks involved in my structure here. Okay, so these bricks need to have minimum of layer two to be able to be blocked by the above items, like to, for having these objects show above those bricks. To do that, this guy has to be layer two. Now, layer two is all well and good, but then I have the same effect over here where I have these bricks that are coming up, and then they come up to these horizontal fences, uh, wall fence, which is actually a horizontal wall in my set, and these guys are layer two. So these block out the strange brick, but then I wanted to have the banister at the top, and the banister at the top has to be layer three. So it was an intentional break. I did, I did do it um, on purpose. It's something that I knew that I was going to have to do to make the effect of this room, and I think that it was a good trade-off. I mean, I've also carefully engineered it so I can speak down here all I want, and there is no blockage of my text. Um, so if players were sitting around on the couch, which has happened several times, um, it becomes, you know, not a big deal. There's not, there's not text that's blocked. Whereas if you're standing specifically right about here, um, or going up and down the stairs, I guess, there's a couple of locations where you can get your text blocked, blocked, but the majority of the locations, so like again, si sitting in the chairs over here, you're not going to get your text blocked. I, I was really conscious about where I positioned the other furniture so that if you're in a natural location um, and having a conversation that it's not going to block your text. So broke a rule, 
did it intentionally, did it with a conscience, and worked around it with the rest of my design. Um, another key point here I'd like to mention are these corners here. There's two corners uh, where these horizontal wall and vertical wall meet up, and just one unit over the edge of these couches here, and it makes such a difference. It makes it look so much more like a, a loft area. There's another secret trick that I used over here. Um, basically, uh, this is like a little lectern area where you can kind of like stand um, if you want to talk to people and have everybody be able to read what you were saying. Um, and I've got these strange bricks over the edge here. And actually, you can't walk into the second layer of that lectern. Like that, that second layer of bath mats um, that have been laid down at the bottom here, you can't actually walk over top of them. It is the edge of the level. I'll just pop a couple of these out and show you. Um, there's a wall basically in that location. So this, this brown wall, um, which you can see in the rest of the, the level here, the, this, this, it doesn't let your, your player pass through. However, to make the impression that the room is a little bit larger than it is, I used these bath mats to cover up that section and then used the um, strange bricks as a wall. You can already get the sensation that these strange bricks are the limit of the walking, like of, of where you can walk from over here when you're actually interacting with them on the stairs, which is a bench. Um, but when you come over here, it looks like it's a little bit bigger because, again, we've got those bath mats in place. So increasing the size of the room, increasing the height and what appears to be height of the room by placing la layer zero objects behind the couches and then working up all the way to layer three. Very rare to see that kind of a, a, a build. Um, I haven't seen many people use layer three, especially inside their homes, to make it taller. Oh, and these guys here too. They got these little supports here that make it look like it's a little bit taller. Everything that I can to do um, a little bit of a, a, an impression that things are tall in this level. Also, I've tried to work on um, using these banners to create uh, some visual vocabulary. So I've used this. It looks like um, looks like a tennis racket, but it's actually I'm, I'm representing a net. So to indicate that down below here, um, we're going to find the bug collection. Got some uh, workout gear in my uh, my basement down here, as well as uh, the carpentry set. I found that um, months. I found that the uh, the bug canisters, like the the jars and the little um, bug cases down here. These guys both have uh, the ability to have text written on them, so I can write descriptions for all of my bugs. And at the same time, they don't get removed if I restore the furniture in the room. So that means that I can kind of play with my carpentry furniture. I have an idea to do um, a bunch of kind of mini game style um, spar setups. So based on that, I want to create um, you know a different a different layout every couple of weeks or whatever, something where I can you know have guild people come in or whatever and um, still get to restore even though that I've got my bugs all set out in here. So they won't get disturbed when I'm pulling those items up and then re restructuring that, that kind of um, spar space. So pretty happy with that layout. Again, in the loot, the loot items you don't get to do the same thing because I've got a, a setup with the layering um, and the, uh, the pets underneath. Because the pets are regular furniture items, they all get re restored every time if you do the restore. So it means laying out. It means basically, it means extra work every time that you want to restore and have your your collection set out that way. Okay, I'm going to avoid the attic. The attic is extremely laggy. It's got a whole ton of other stuff in there. Um, and I'm going to come back out here and talk a little bit about what I've done with these structures here. So. Um, in previous videos, I've covered this as well. My, you know, self-killing um, farm, death farm. It's got uh, spike floors instead of um, conveyor belts. I'm pretty happy about that. That's been doing pretty well for me this time. Uh, dropping my bandit bombs and stuff in there. So uh, this kind of a basic structure here, really easy to build if you have these floor tiles. I think um, conventional items that you can get on a regular basis now, you could use bath mats for this kind of a, you know, kind of a, um, I don't even know what to call this, overhang. Uh, you can use this uh, just as a guide, basically, to have some kind of a creation in your own house. You could use carpets, you could use floor mats, you could probably use the um, uh, the red carpet, what's it called, the, the tiling one. 
and create some kind of a, a circular or, you know, again, square pattern around the edge and just up the layers on those. Might have a similar effect. So I've used layers here. Um, these guys are layer two to create that, that impression that there's a wall that's kind of been cross-sectioned. And then the, the inside of these levels or inside of these little house structures you can reach um, just by walking under that first layer. So anything, basically anything that you can create um, the illusion that you're walking into a space. Um, there's a lot of other furniture objects that you could probably use in this way. Um, carpets or chairs or you know benches and things like that you can easily throw up to layer two and then have a, a, an impression that you're walking under an object. Another favorite of mine is the uh, railroad uh, ties. So if you have the railroad tiles, you can um, throw those up to layer two and even create like lattices if you want to have some flowers hanging off of them or something. You can do all kinds of cool stuff that way too. I've used my strange bricks here. Um, so these are three tall. These are a couple of uh, three talls on the outside and then just one by itself. And these were Japanese lanterns uh, from Japan Nexus. So outside of the Japanese Nexus items, I think there's a few other items you could use. Uh, I would say maybe a mirror would make a nice window. It's a little bit larger. Um, otherwise, maybe some candles or something like that behind an object. Um, whether that's a display case, you could probably create a display case or use a display case in as the window. It's almost the same size and shape as the Japan, um, the Japanese lantern. But um, be careful there because it is transparent as well. And then layering becomes a complexity. So you might want to have zero layer um, display cases, for example, um, to allow for the rest of your structure. But then you would also have to look at where you're positioning your candle. These ones are really handy. I like them. Probably my favorite furniture item that I've had. It's just versatile. You can take them out. You can use them for different stuff. They look like little windows in some situations or you know, little grills or whatever goes on the front of the window. Um, again, I've got the same kind of visual context for this. I'm using these swords to represent my baddie, uh, like my baddie or bounty tips. And then on the inside of my... Oop, getting spiked over here. On the inside of my... Oh, oh, by the way, one more thing is that we've got this lovely clay pot here. There's a new clay furniture set um, that you can get with the, the map update that you can see uh, in-game. If you're doing the uh, the treasure map hunting, you can get some clay furniture. So I did the same thing up here um, for the, the visual vocabulary. I've got a, uh, a snorkel so that when you go in and under the water, I mean it is kind of a hint that yes you have to swim to get there, but it is it's showing the, the loot. So using those little banners that I had on hand to kind of indicate different things in different locations. Okay, so that's about it for this build. Um, pretty happy with the way that it's gone through. Uh, I've spent, again, like I said, I had an idea in about 10 seconds. I wanted to do a bunch of guides for my actual guild. Um, let people who stumble through have a, a helpful piece of information here and there, maybe. Um, if something that they you know hadn't heard before crops up. Um, and then I spent, yeah, better part of a week kind of, you know, in my off time, just kind of building it out. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope it gives you some ideas. Uh, and I will see you all next time.